That's what I told them only one of them has ever played on the radio before. And that would be Daddy. <laughs> Psalms. I hope you've been able to uh, read in the book of Psalms with us as we've been going through. Uh, also, as you continue to read in the book of Psalms, continue to pray. This week we're going to read Psalms 73 through 78. Psalms chapter 73 through Psalm 78 this week is what we'll be reading. Uh, before we get started this morning, i got a little Mother's Day humor to uh, share with you. found a few... Uh, uh, a few funnies to give to you this morning as we look at mothers and we celebrate mothers today. You've heard this saying before, I'm sure. It says, keep making that face and it's going to freeze that way. I'm sure you've all heard that. Mom are always saying that to their kids. Mom always uh, saying that to, to their children. But you, can, you know that times have changed when you hear one mom look at her scowling daughter and say, keep making that face and you're going to need Botox when you get older. My mother, a master of guilt trips, showed me a photo of herself waiting by a phone that never rings. 
Mom, I call all the time, I said. If you had an answering machine, you'd know. Soon after that, my brother installed one for her. When I called the next time, I got her machine. The answer machine said, if you're a salesperson, press 1. If you're a friend, press 2. If you're my daughter who never calls, press 911 because the shock will probably give me a heart attack. In a department store, a lady saw a toddler having, having a furious tantrum. His mom was unfazed. You may as well give up on crying, she told the little toddler. You're stuck with me for 18 more years. So lessons that we can learn from mothers or lessons that we can learn from moms. But also our children teach us lessons. Here's some, children's, here's some lessons that children probably taught their moms. Mothers have learned from their children that a three-year-old's voice is louder than 200 adults in a crowded restaurant. Mothers also have learned that when you hear the toilet flush and you hear the words, oh no, it's already too late. And mothers have learned that Play-Doh and microwaves should never be used in the same sentence. And you've also learned that super glue is truly forever. So I hope some of you have never had those experiences today. But this morning I want us to look at why, at how we can be faithful as not just uh, Christians, but how we can learn a lesson from a mom in the Bible. I know it's not always easy being a mom. I know it, it takes patience, it takes faith, it takes strength. Um, you know, a lot of times it takes patience and strength just not to string up the children, right? And so some would say luck and a whole lot of love, but even more, it takes God to raise a child. Even more, it takes God to be a faithful mother. But as a mother, how do you handle troubling times? And so this morning in 2 Kings chapter 4, we'll be in 2 Kings chapter 4. This morning we're going to see, just read a few verses here. I've got several verses for you, so bear with me this morning. But uh, as, a, as a mom, as a person, as a Christian, how do you handle troubling times? We should all handle them in the way that this mother shows us today. But I want us to look at this woman, a mom. No, we're not giving her name in the Bible, but I want to see how she handles trouble differently than most of us would think about as we handle trouble. 2 Kings chapter 4, actually beginning in verse 12. 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning in verse 12. Then he said to Gezi, his servant, Call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. So, she, so he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. So, she, so he said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, About this time next year you, should embrace, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had told her. Now in verse 20. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant Gazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And she answered, it is well. So as you read this story, you see a picture of faith. Faith when troubled times come. You see a picture of faith when the Lord appears to be gone. You see a picture of faith when all others have no faith. So just a few lessons that we can learn from this unnamed mother in the Bible today. Many times we look around and we see people in the church or we see people that we look up to and we try to find faith in them. And we try to find faith in the, in the pastors and the deacons and the teachers and the leaders of the church. And every one of us as leaders around try to show that type of faith. But sometimes we have to look in the Bible and sometimes we see this, these people like this unnamed lady in the Bible that gives us one of the greatest lessons we can ever have in faith. One of the greatest things that we could ever learn about faith. 
go through this story with you real quick so you can understand what is happening here. So, I know there was a lot of verses, so let me tell you, kind of go back over this. Elisha was a prophet of God. A prophet of God in those days was the voice of God. So God would speak through his prophets. People would go to the prophets, and the prophets would go before God, and God would answer them through these prophets. So Elisha, a prophet of God, would pass through the town of Shun Shunammon here. And one day, this lady offered him some food and, uh, and to eat, and he would continue to stop by her place every time he came to town. And so as he did that, she convinced her husband to build a small room up above for him to stay in every time he passed through. So this hospitality that she showed this man of God wasn't going unnoticed. And because of this kindness, Elisha wanted to do something for her. So she, he said, what do you need? What can I give you? What can I do for you? Can I talk to the, the guard at the gate? Can I talk to the people in the town? And she said that she needed nothing. But he was determined to see what he could do to help her. And so the servant told him that she did not have a son. She did not have a child. So he told her that she would have a son. She would have a child soon. And notice her words to him. She said, No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. Her faith was, was strong there, but it wasn't as strong at this point as it will be as we see later on. Well, when the appointed time comes, she had a son, just as Elisha had promised her. She had the son. He grew up, and one day he was in the fields, and it says that he fell, he hit his head, and that he was taken to his mother, and that later on he died. So this one son that she was promised from Elisha died at pretty early age, we see here. And this is where we're going to pick up in the story. And this is where we're going to see the faith really come about. And this is where we're going to see some lessons that we can learn from this mom today. And this is where we're going to understand the faith that we can say it is well in the most difficult times. Because after the son died, she knew that she could only find help in one place. And that one place that she could find help was in the Lord. And she knew that the only person that she could go to was the Lord to find help. And that the Lord would speak through his servant Elisha. So she wanted to go to him. So what can we learn from this mom today? What can we learn from her about faith in our lives? And what can we learn about how to have faith in troubled times? Well, the first thing I think we can learn from her today is that we need to put our trust in God, not in man. We need to put our trust in God, not in man. You may say, well, she didn't do this because she went to Elisha. Well, remember, going to Elisha in that day was just as good as going to God, some would say, because in that time in the Bible, the prophets were the direct connection to God for these people. And so by going to Elisha, she was saying, I'm going to God. I'm going to the one who speaks to God. So she took her problems to God instead of man. Where do we go? Ask yourself this question. When tribulation and trouble times come, where do you go first? No, where do you go first? Do you go to God or do you go to man or do you go to somewhere else for your answers? She knew where she needed to go. She took her son and she didn't get him ready for burial. He had just died and she didn't get him ready for burial. She took her son, she took him to Elisha's room, put him in Elisha's bed so that she could go talk to God. Her faith was so strong in God that she was preparing for a resurrection and not a burial. Think about that for a second. She was preparing for God to resurrect her child. She wasn't preparing to bury her child. She was preparing for the God, the man of God, to do a great miracle. And she was preparing for God to resurrect him. She laid him on the prophet's bed and said, God has got this. God is in control. God's going to take care of this. When things come when the hard times came for her, when the worst situation came, she said, I'm putting my trust in God. I'm not putting my trust in man. And so she put her trust in God and she went and she got a donkey and she began to prepare for the long trip to go get the man of God so that God could speak and God could work. Who do you put your trust in today? Who do you put your faith in today when times come? Do you put your faith in God or do you put your faith in man? This lady, this woman shows us that she put her faith and tr trust in God first and not in man. The second thing that we learn from her is that God is always in control. God is always in control. How could she say it is well to these people? Her son had just died. Her husband even asked her, is everything okay? And she looks him in the eye and she says, it is well. Why? Because God is in control. She understood that God was in control of every situation, everything. There was nothing too big for God. Death, 
No problem. God can handle it, she was saying. Nothing was too big for God. Do you believe today? Ask yourself, do you believe today that God is always in control? Do you believe there is nothing too big for Him? She believed that. She said God is in control. This woman knew that God had given her the child. She knew that He had made a promise to her. And he, she knew that He had big plans. And she knew that He was a God even over death. The hardest trials, the hardest tribulations we have, God is still in control. And this lady, this woman, this Shunammite woman can teach us that today. That no matter what happens, God is in control of our lives today. The next thing that we notice is this. She put her faith and trust in God, not in man. She understood that God was always in control. But the next thing we see is that she does not leave God. She does not leave Him. If you continue reading, we see that Elisha sends his servant ahead, but the woman looks at him and she says, I am not leaving you. In other words, I'm not leaving the presence of God. God is with you and I'm not leaving you. How often in our troubled times do we leave God? How often in our troubled times do we put God behind and say, God, why did you let this happen? I can't trust you anymore. How many times do we leave God and say, I've got this, God? Sometimes we say, if God loved me, He wouldn't have let this happen to me. Or sometimes we might say, God can't be a righteous God and allow this injustice to happen to me. It's what we say sometimes. Instead of putting our faith and our trust in God and saying God is in control, we leave God. But she shows us a good example. I am not leaving your side. It's what she says. You and I today need to look at God and we say, God, I'm not leaving you. I don't care what's happening in the world today. I don't care what's happening in my life. I don't care what's going on. I am not leaving you today. She didn't blame God. She didn't run away from God. Instead, she ran to God and she clung to Him until He answered. So she put her faith and her trust in God, not in man. She understood that God was in control. She didn't leave God when the time came. And then finally, she let God do His work. She let God do His work. I want to read verses 33, beginning at verse 33 now. And I want you to see what happens when God begins to work. So, Elisha has arrived at the house at this time. In verse 33 it says, He went in therefore, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And he stretched himself out on the child. And the flesh of the child became warm. He returned and walked back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on him. Then the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. How many of us would have allowed that to happen? How many of us would have said, What are you doing? Are you crazy? Why are you treating the child like that? Come on, say a prayer. Do something. You know what to do. Instead, she stepped back and she let God work. How many times do we just get out of the way and let God work? Many times in our lives, we can't get out of the way. Many times in our lives, instead of getting out of the way and letting God work, we try to tell God what to do like we know better. And what we need to understand is putting our faith and trust in God means that we just let God work. It may seem strange to us. It may seem weird to us. It may seem like that God doesn't know what He's doing to us. But in the end, God always knows better than us. In the end, God is always going to have the right answer. In the end, it's always going to be God's work that prevails. And so we see that she had enough faith to say, I don't care how strange it looks. I don't care what happens. I am going to let God work. I'm going to get out of the way and I'm going to let God work. So she shows us a lesson in faith by putting her trust in God, not in man. She shows us that God is always in control. She shows us that we need to stay with God no matter what our circumstances are. And then finally, she shows us that we need to get out of the way and we need to let God work. Notice how through everything, in every circumstance here, she continued to look at people around her and say, it's okay, it's well, it's going to be okay. She guarded her lips. She guarded what she said. She put her faith and trust in God and simply said, It is well. She kept a good testimony through everything. She put her life and her child's life in the hands of God. And she trusted that He would make it better. 
She did what she needed to do. She went to God. She made the long journey to Mount Carmel. She talked to the man of God. She brought him back. They went and went to the child. You see, God was good. And she believed that. She believed that God could answer her prayer and that God would help her. And she believed that He might grant her this request. Do we have that type of faith today? Can any of us say that we have the type of faith to say it's well when the troubled times come? You see, her son was dead. And she still had enough faith to look her husband in the eye and say, It's okay. It is well. Why? Because God's got this. God is in control. We, that's the type of faith that we need to learn how to have today. We need to learn how to have the type of faith that puts our trust in Him and follow His path no matter what comes along. No matter how odd it may seem, no matter how troubled we may be, we need to look around and say, God, it's going to be, or it's going to be okay because, God, you are in control. I'm going to step out of the way and I'm going to let you work the way you work. And whatever comes about, comes about. Whenever I look at this story, and I read this story, and I, I talk about this lady in the Bible, it always brings me back to this song and the story behind the song. Many of you have heard the song, It Is Well. We've sung this many times in this church. It was written by a wealthy Chicago lawyer, Horatio Spafford. And he had a thriving legal practice. He had a beautiful home. He had a wife. He had four daughters and a son. He was also a devout Christian. He was friends and a faithful student. He was friends with many faithful students of the Scripture. He was friends with Dwight Moody, some other great Bible teachers of the time. And he was also well known in his area as a strong Christian. As he began to get more famous, as his financial success came about, as his professional and religious successes came, he and his wife Anna suffered the loss of their son. He tragically died. And then on October 8, 1871, shortly after that, the Great Chicago Fire destroyed almost every real estate investment that he had. All of a sudden, he had lost his son. All of a sudden, all of his investments were gone. And so in 1873, a couple of years later, he had scheduled a trip to Europe to give his wife and daughters a vacation that was much needed. Time to recover from all the tragedy. And he was going to join Moody and other evangelists over there. And they were going to go on an evangelistic campaign in England. He sent his wife and daughters ahead of him while he remained in Chicago to take care of some business. And then a few days later, or several days later, he received notice that the ship had encountered a collision and all four of his daughters had passed away and drowned and only his wife had survived. So he got on a boat, started that long trip across the sea to be with his wife. And as he was on that boat, and as he was sitting there thinking about it, that is when he wrote this song. That's when you hear this song, when sorrow like sea billows roll, it is well, it is well with my soul. Why could he write a song? How could he write a song like that in a time of tragedy? Because he had faith in God. He knew that his faith had to be in God, not in man. He knew that God was in control and he knew that God was going to do great things and he knew that God was still going to do and use him and his wife somehow. And so he knew who God was and he put all of his faith and all of his trust in God even though he had basically lost everything he had had. And he said, it is well with my soul. Why? Because I can trust in God. His trust in God is an example that all of us need to learn. Just like the woman in the Bible today. Can we put our faith and our trust in Him in the hard times? Do you have faith enough this morning to trust in the Lord the way that this unnamed Shunammite woman did in the Bible? Can you truly say it is well today? You see, the writer of the song, Horatio, his story didn't end there. Years later, he and his wife were blessed with three more children. In 1881, all of them moved to Israel. He moved to Jerusalem and he started a, a group there, an American group there. American mission was to serve the poor and to teach about Christ in Jerusalem. Because of his faith and trust in God, he continued to work and continued to serve God and was blessed. You see, we need to trust God today, not because everything is perfect, but because our, our future, our lives, are in the hands of the God, the Father, that loves us. 
So do we have enough faith this morning to say, God, I trust you. I put my life in your hands. And no matter what happens, I will say it is well because you are with me today, God. I put my unperfect, my imperfect life in your hands today, Lord. And I'm going to step back and I'm going to let you work and let you do what you can do for me. And I'm going to trust you every step of the way, no matter what comes in my life today. That needs to be our prayer this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, we come before you this morning. And Lord, as we see the story of this mother with great faith, as we see the story of this mother that just put her whole life, everything she had in your hands, Father, we come before you this morning to ask that you help us do the same. Father, we come before you today asking that you take over. Father, we give you control today. Father, we put our faith and our trust in you. And we say that no matter what comes about, we're going to stay with you. And we're going to let you work in our lives and let you work through us. Father, we come before you today to commit our lives to you. Father, in a way that maybe we haven't before. And Father, we come today asking that you give us the strength and the faith to stand up in the midst of tragedy, in the midst of trials, in the midst of tribulations and say, it's okay, it is well. Why? Because God is in control. Lord, teach us that kind of faith. Show us that kind of faith today. And Lord, give us the faith to just turn it all over to you. No matter what's happening in our life, Father, let us give it to you today. Let us feel your presence in our lives, Lord, and let us feel you work in our lives today. And let us be able to look the world in the face and say it is well because God is in control. It is well because God is still on the throne. It is well because he knows the future and he holds me in his hands today. Lord, give us that type of faith. In your name we pray. Amen.